Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of people, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, for but whoever endures to the end will be saved. Whenever they persecute you in one town, flee to another. <clears throat> Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I remember when, uh, when I joined the Navy, this was, of course, back during the Vietnam War, and one of the things that you saw everywhere, you saw recruiting posters, and you saw uh, slogans. There were advertisements on the radio for joining the various branches of the military. Like for the Navy, it says, you know, uh, join the Navy and see the world. Well, <laughs> that was partly true. I got to see a part of the world, Vietnam, and uh, parts of uh, Western California and things like that. But uh, needless to say, these recruiting posters are there to kind of help you feel good about what you're about to do in terms of offering your life in service to your country. What Jesus is saying to his disciples here isn't the best recruiting poster but he's being honest with them. I'm sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. And I think that's one of the things that is really important for us to remember that especially in the early days of the church and actually for the first uh, centuries of the church, there was tremendous persecution. Now we have persecution today in certain parts of the world and we have those of us who are ridiculed for our faith and things like that. But nonetheless, there was not like this universal per, uh, persecution where you could not even trust the people that you were around because somebody might turn you in or betray you. So basically, Jesus said, I'm sending you as a sheep in the midst of wolves. And of course, this was a very common illustration for the people of that day because they realized that uh, the wolf was one of the main predators for sheep. But not only that, that sheep were very very benign. There is, they had no fighting instincts whatsoever. So they were um, just great targets for the aggressive wolves. And so he says, I'm sending you like sheep. But then he says, be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. And of course, when he's thinking about the serpent, he's thinking about the way that it just kind of moves quietly and moves throughout uh, things hardly without disturbing anything around. It's, they're very stealth creatures. And of course, simple as doves, that, you know, a dove is not a very complicated uh, bird. It just coos and uh, flies. You know, there's one basic uh, sing-song language that it uses. It's very simple in what it communicates. So, He's saying, that's kind of how I'm sending you. I want you to be shrewd. I want you to move very carefully, but I want your message to be simple. I want you to just be there and just, just give that message. Don't uh, become like a hawk or a vulture. Don't uh, even become sing-song about it. Just deliver it simply as a dove would sing. And so he also tells them, something of their future. <clears throat> this future does not only belong to the original 12 that were being commissioned and sent out, but this really is a description of uh, that point on in history in terms of how the church was treated. 
that they would be handed over. Uh, they would be scourged in the synagogues. They would be handed over. Not too many years uh, after this was written, there would be the great uh, war between the Jews and the Romans, and the Romans uh, extinguished the Jews for the most part, uh, took them out of Jerusalem, uh, basically destroyed Jerusalem, ransacked it, took all of the valuables. And uh, it was during this time, of course, that uh, the, uh, the whole uh, judgment on, on the house of Israel was, you know, was given. It was at that, that point that uh, the J Jewish sacrimonial or sacrificial system was uh, completely destroyed with the destruction of the temple. So this was the time, and in many ways they saw this as the time of the coming of the Son of Man, that this was the fullness of the church coming into the world. And so it's at that point that we see why it says you won't be able to finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And he's not talking about the second coming as we understand it, but rather the full manifestation of the church um, as Jerusalem is destroyed and the temple and the sacrificial system of the Jews is no longer present. So one of the things that is said here that's really intriguing has to do with what you are to do if you are turned over to the authorities. And basically, Jesus says you're going to be under supernatural care. Don't worry about what you're to say, because when you speak, it will be the Holy Spirit speaking through you. It will be God speaking through you. So with all that is going to be taking place, and here he talks about, you know, brother's going to hand over brother, and father's going to hand over children, and children are going to hand over parents. There's going to be a great upheaval, and we're going to see this throughout the history of the church because the church comes in with a message that's very different from the pagan world especially. But uh, even in terms of the Jewish sacrificial system, uh, we have now a new covenant by grace, uh, and it's a different covenant than the one that was established by the law. Now the same commandments are intact and in effect, but the means of fulfilling them comes from that, devel uh, that developing relationship with the Holy Spirit that comes as the Holy Spirit is poured down into the church. So again, there's a lot of foreshadowing here of things that are going to take place, not just as they go out this first time, but what's going to happen in the times ahead. So this is a very prophetic window into Jesus' words concerning what the church is going to face in the years to come. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, always good to be with you, and again, the Lord willing, we will be together again tomorrow for another edition of Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.